put in your headphones. It's about to get busy. Today I'm going to be demoing and reviewing this wonderful green pedal, the DoD FX25 Envelope Filter. So, looking at the pedal up close, you've got this lovely fetching green colour on an all-metal chassis. Uh, rubber footplate, as you'd expect. My serial number's worn off. I think this one is from the late 1990s, but I'm not sure. Standard quarter-inch input and output jack here. We've got a really annoying power supply. It's a 10-volt supply, just to be inconvenient, and it's a 3.5mm jack, which is pretty rare and liable to quite a lot of noise. So if you've got a standard like power brick or some other power supply, you'll need to get an adapter to fit in there at the top. There's a battery snap there, so I'm gonna be using that today in the review rather than powering it off the mains. Pretty flimsy, this just made of plastic and probably liable to break fairly swiftly if it gets too much abuse. Same goes for the foot switch not the rugged sort of uh, metal variety switch that you get with you know, stock boss pedals and most other things. LED and then just two knobs. So this pedal is fairly idiot proof, which is good news for me. So I'm gonna be demoing the FX25 with this Mexican made uh, Fender Mustang PJ bass, which is pretty much brand new. I'm gonna keep the pickup selector in the middle so you get a blend of the P and the J sounds um, and it has factory stock factory standard round round strings not sure what they are i presume they are fenders so with the pedal bypass this is what it sounds like and let's kick in the pedal and see what happens so we have the range which is the intensity of the effect and we have the sensitivity which is the threshold control really it's the point at which it starts to affect your bass playing so let's give it a bit of both and see what happens okay, it's time to dig in loads so let's crank up the sensitivity a bit Again, not getting much, gonna crank it up even more. Really thin in the top end there. Really trebly, um, sort of scooped sound. Let's keep going, let's see what happens if we max out. That's just really thin. So if we dial it back a bit, sensitivity maxed out, it's horribly, horribly thin and trebly. Maybe that's the sound you're after, who knows. Let's just bring it back a bit. There you go. It's really, really difficult to demonstrate an envelope filter without making weird sort of vowel sounds with your mouth. So apologies for any bizarre bass faces that are coming out. Let's see what happens if we adjust the range as well. Let's get a much longer sweep on that filter. About pretty usable all the way up not the best thing for chords 
Uh, if you're one of those people who can't really think of anything better to do with the bass than slap it to death, then this is also a pretty good pedal for you. Maybe this is the thing. So an important consideration with any pedal that you're buying is understanding how it works in conjunction with other things that might be in your effects chain. So we're going to look at the envelope filter in conjunction with an octave pedal. I'm going to use the classic Brownette provider, which is the OC2, the Boss OC2, loved and abused by thousands of bass players uh, since the 1980s or thereabouts. And I'm going to put it first in the chain. So that solves any potential tracking problems. Um, and I find that this setup works a little bit better than having the envelope in front. Your ears may disagree and that's fine, but this is my preference. My preferred OC2 setting is to have all the octave down all the way up and none of my dry signal, but that might change. So here's how it sounds. Nice and glitchy. So pedal in. Let's put in some of the dry signal so you get the upper octave as well. Hear how that affects it. Let's try that. if we pair the envelope filter with a little bit of fuzz I'm going to use the comically named and wonderfully colored way huge pork line which comes in a rather attractive shade of purple I'm going to put it first in the chain because I want to distort the modulation rather than modulating the distortion if that makes sense so here's how the first bass sounds I'm going to use a plectrum why not with some filter on it. Again, you can just really hear that trebly bite out of everything. If I back off the tone on my bass, P bass thing. Lovely grungy sound actually. Another option is pairing the FX25 envelope with a bit of dirt. So I'm going to use the Dark Glass B3K overdrive pedal. Uh, here's how the bass sounds on its own. I'm going to break out the plectrum. And with a bit of grunt. Let's put some quack in there as well. Talk about the drive. So the pros and cons of the FX25. The good stuff is that it's really easy to use. It's only got two knobs, which means that even an idiot like me can get a sound out of it fairly quickly. It only does one thing, it only really does one sound very well, but you could see that as a good thing. You know, It doesn't overcomplicate the issue. It's quite a good entry level envelope filter, not very expensive and far more intuitive and immediate sound wise than 
other I was about to say better envelope filters but I don't necessarily mean that because better is entirely subjective tone is in the ear of the beholder and just because something has more knobs doesn't make it a better pedal anyway this is really straightforward to use and you can get a sound very quickly if you're looking for a sort of entry level pedal that quickly gets you that wet funk sound then this is not a bad shout it's really really cheap compared to other pedals on the market um, there are still plenty of them floating around on forums and on ebay um, second hand bad things construction really having a plastic battery snap is a silly idea i think because that clip is liable to break fairly swiftly which means your battery is going to be hanging out all over the place same with this foot switch these little screws need almost constant tightening up which is really irritating they should have just used a uh, standard metal switch like the boss pedals and then the power supply is kind of irritating as well not only do you need an adapter but when i use it mine it tends to be really noisy which restricts me to using batteries which is not ideal um, both because they're not great for the environment and they're liable to run out of juice when you need it the most so cheap and cheerful but not particularly refined